Let's look at the base amp model in the Kronos. For starters, I want to compare some of the models with some of the models in Steinberg's VST base amp. First up is this valve amp, and you can see we have the same name valve in the Kronos. This is, uh, these are both supposed to mimic an Ampeg SVT. Let's look at what the curve looks like in uh, the VST base amp first. So this is just flat noise. No, it's not. It's actually a sine wave. We're going to switch it to flat noise, though. And then let's bypass, unbypass this and look at the kind of spectral response that this model imparts. And remember that amps are sort of like cabinets in that they impart a kind of weird EQ curve on the input signal. Um, but then, unlike cabinets, they are also giving harmonics to the signal. So anyway, we're just going to be looking at the, the EQ curve for now. So the frequency response of this has a dip or a scoop around 500. Uh, also with a sharp roll off at around 17k. And now, uh, looking at the same thing from the Kronos, you again see that scoop at around 500, but then the highs extend. In fact, let me try to take down the presence and unfortunately, it doesn't create a sharp roll-off. In fact, if it did, that would make the presence knob kind of unintuitive uh, to how a real bass amp behaves. The next one I want to compare is this Paradise. This is supposed to mimic a David Eden WT-800, I believe is the name of the model. And let's bypass the Kronos and just look at the Steinberg emulation first. See kind of like a almost like a sinusoidal response across the frequency spectrum. Now let's look at Korg's version, and we have to change to gold panel. Uh, and again, you can kind of see like how these are similar. This is named gold panel, this actually has a gold panel. Um, so yeah, looking at this frequency response curve, it's not quite as sinusoidal. I think I can actually get a little bit closer if I dip the mid down a bit. Gives it more of kind of like a sinuous response. So let's look at some of these uh, models and kind of see the differences between them. I find the biggest differences seem to be in the way that they scoop the mids. So let's kind of just roll through them. So moderately flat. This. See, that one's really scooped. So this is a sharper scoop, that one's a little bit wider, and then that's the end of them. So yeah, it seems like the biggest differences between the bass amps, again, is how they scoop the mids. All of them impart odd order harmonics, but some of them, of course, distort more than others. I've kind of gone through myself and made a list of the ones that seem to distort more or less. And you might want to do that on your own because, you know, our ears might be different and you might perceive one to be, uh, you may be more sensitive to one that's distorting the highs a bit more than the lows and things like that. The next um, parameter that I want to talk about is this volume knob. And this volume knob is post bass amp, so it's not driving into the distortion unit. So if you turn this up, you're not saturating the signal and creating more harmonics. You're only turning up and down the signal after it's passed through the distortion unit. This is actually pretty easy to demonstrate. So right now uh, I'm on LA Studio. Let me switch over to a sine wave. See, I have a 100 hertz sine wave. And I am on. Let me boost up the volume. And I'm not hearing much distortion, and this, this waveform is so low, but I can use the tone knob actually. This will boost into the distortion unit. See that I am adding some harmonics if I take that down. And I'm, I'm actually surprised at um, how I don't, um, it doesn't seem like I'm driving it very hard. But if I go to my insert effects, and right now I'm just using the red compressor, I actually can drive into the distortion unit harder with this unit. And 
and it's not playing. Let me see why. Oh, <laughs> of course, because I have the volume all the way down. Okay, so now when I turn the volume up, see that the higher I go, the more it does distort. And you can kind of see that the uh, difference between these waveforms changes with the volume. See that those harmonics are dipping down faster than this is than this main sine wave is turning down. Um, whereas if I were to turn the volume down from the volume knob, you see that they turn down at the same rate. In other words, the ratio between them um, never changes. Yeah. Or would it be the ratio? No, it would be the uh, the volume difference between them never changes. Whereas uh, this one, this way it does. Cool. So I hope that was uh, demonstrative of what's happening there. Uh, the last parameter to go over this is, is this mid-range. So let me switch back over to noise and drop the volume a bit since noise is so loud. So let me take down actually everything except this mid-range. And let's let's look at what we're left with. So this is just the, the mid-range boosted, and with this perimeter at 1, it looks like the main bump is around, is a bit above 200. If I turn it down, it looks like it drops a bit above 100. If I turn it up, see that we're above 500 now, 1k, and closer to 2k on that one. Uh, and this is different per bass amp model. So if I were to switch over to like Jazz Combo, this one's much more subtle with its boost. So this isn't just a generic EQ for each bass amp. It actually changes, or at least this uh, mid-range definitely changes. Um, my guess is that the other ranges change as well. In fact, let's dip this all the way down and then just boost presence. And let's switch between the models to see how this changes. Oh yeah, that's a big change. Take down presence. So we always have this scoop here, this boost there. Let's actually boost the mid. Yep. So this can drastically change the flavor of the signal that you have going into the uh, into the base amp model. So that's all of the weird and strange behaviors of this. I can end this video now. And next time, um, maybe we'll go over some uh, amp and uh, cabinet comparisons. Thanks.